Xenon, I can't believe what a party pooper you are. The party's been going for a couple of hours now, and you're still reading that spy novel? It's, it's not a spy novel, but I finished it, and now I'm reading the sequel, and now all of you are back to... Try to get you to join the fun! Yeah, Xenon, we love you, and we just want you to quit being such a loner and have a good time with us. Love? Look, Ruthenium... I'm fond of you and Yori and your friends, but I don't really love or bond with anyone. I told you, I have eight electrons in my valence shell. I'm an inert, noble gas with a full octet. There's no room here for bonding. I don't mean love, love, <laughs> like me and my boyfriend Hydro here. Whoa, slow down there, Ruthie. We just met a couple of hours ago. I bond with lots of atoms. Me and my twin brother bond with oxygen over here when we make water. Me and my brothers and carbon here make beautiful explosive methane and other fuels together. According to this book, Hydrogen, that's absolutely correct. Because you have one valence electron, you can bond with almost any atom, except me and my other noble gas cousins. You can form covalent bonds with nonmetals to create gases, liquids, even acids. And you can join with metals to create ionic bonds of solids, liquids, even bases, which are the opposite of acids. You're fickle, Hydro. No, ma'am. I'm versatile. Yeah, me and chlorine sometimes hang out to form hydrochloric acid, and sometimes me and sodium and oxygen get together to form the base sodium hydroxide. <laughs> yep, and sometimes I get together with Hydro and two of his brothers, and we form aluminum hydride. Yeah, well, you made your point. You sure get around, Hydro. Other than we inert gases, most atoms do ruthenium. Atoms can be recycled infinite times, breaking bonds with one molecule and forming new bonds with others. It happens every time there's a chemical reaction. Here on our planet, chemical bonds are most common with elements on the top half of the periodic table. Carbon, silicon, aluminum, calcium, oxygen, sodium, iron, nitrogen, and a few others. What about me and my sister Ruth? You're further down the periodic table and more rare, but that doesn't mean you can't form minerals and other compounds. Ruth and the chlorine triplets can form ruthenium chloride, for example. Say, Xenon, what were those big words you used? Ionic and covalent? Good question, Hydrogen. Ionic bonds are formed between two or more ions, which, of course, are charged particles created by an imbalance of protons to electrons. Within the bond, there will always be at least one cation. Cations are positively charged metals, often from groups 1 and 2 of the periodic table. In ionic bonds, cations bond with anions, which are negatively charged nonmetals from the upper right side of the periodic table. Plus me over here. I'm a rebel who doesn't follow rules. That's right, Hydro. You're the only non-metal on the left side of the periodic table. Now, in an ionic bond, the metal transfers its valence electrons to the non-metal in order for both atoms to stabilize and form four octets of eight electrons. The most famous example of this is table salt, or sodium chloride. <laughs> sodium is here in group 1A, which means he has one valence electron which makes him a little imbalanced. Uh, uh. But chlorine in group 7A has seven valence electrons, and she will stabilize into a full octet as soon as she acquires one more. Once sodium gives her his valence electron, he stabilizes because his lower orbital shell already has eight valence electrons. So after that, our wild and crazy sodium friend will turn nice and mellow. Like you, Xenon. Aw, oh, that's sweet, Yori. Anyhow, Hydro, covalent bonds are formed between two or more nonmetals, like when you and oxygen make water. The difference is that you share your electrons, like two people sharing music with the same pair of earbuds. Uh, you crack me up, Xenon. Everyone knows people are a myth. 
except elves. Elf people are real. <clears throat> now, with water, H2O, we of course have two single electron hydrogen atoms bonding with one six valence electron oxygen atom, therefore fulfilling the octet rule. But unlike ionic molecules, since covalently bonded atoms share their electrons, they can sometimes form double or triple bonds between atoms. This means covalently bonded molecules sometimes fulfill the octet rule in creative ways, and they don't always have a total number of electrons that equal multiples of eight. I'm a metal. What if I bond with other metals, like mm, silver or gold? That would make you a metallically bonded alloy. Electrons move about freely in metallic bonds and don't stick to just one or two atoms. That's why we use metal wires in our light fixtures and other electronics. Free electron movement causes electric currents. So covalent, ionic, and metallic, those are the only types of atomic bonds? Those are the most common kinds. <laughs> what about the bonds of friendship? Ah, uh, that's too close, Ruth. I have a full octet. I don't have room in my life for any bonds. Come on, Xenon. You know you love us. Group hug, everyone. No means no. I don't... Say you love us, Xenon. Say it. If I say it, will you all give me my space? Sorry, Xenon. We don't want to freak you out. We love you. You can come down now. Okay. Okay, I love you. All of you. <laughs> well, Xenon, you're usually so mellow, and I've, I've never seen you show so much emotion. It does seem I am capable of fear and disgust. Love is an emotion. Love is a decision one makes to express preference or fondness toward others, not an emotion. You said you love us, and love is an emotion. The same way that sarcasm is an emotion, I suppose. Xenon, why don't you come join us at the party? I prefer my own company, but thank you. Never mind. I'll go. I'll go. Just keep a polite social distance, please. <laughs>